everybody, this is Space Marine Steve from Play on Tabletop, and I'm joined here by Tao, Nick. Welcome to another installment <laughs> of this kind of starter 40K series. Walking through the basics of the 40K universe, how to build your first army, your first miniature, and how to play your first game. We found two brand new people in the hobby that we're gonna guide through this process. We're gonna give you a very quick synopsis, dipping your toes into all the different lore of all 20 plus however many factions there are. Ready? Go. The world of 40K is a world set in the far-flung future, 40,000 years into the future. It is a time of constant conflict where mighty armies clash on countless worlds. Humanity stands alone, beset on all sides by threats heretical, mutant, and alien. There is no mercy, there is no respite, there is only war. Thirty thousand. I have no idea. Obviously, the future, the grimdark future. I don't actually know a lot about like 40k lore in general. I know that everyone's kind of battling each other. It's it's war. It's all it's all war. That's pretty much the gist of it. Hey, folks. JT here, the voice from our 40k and 40 minute battle reports, here to give you a complete run through of all the various factions in Warhammer 40k. And boy, howdy, are there a lot of them. There are currently 18 playable factions in the 40k tabletop game, and all of them have deep lore, sub-factions, and characters, and we can't cover absolutely everything, but let's give it a go! Man is uh, obviously fighting on behalf of the Emperor. For the Emperor! Against heretics and xenos and and that's, that's, that's what I know so far. The Emperor of Mankind, what a great place to start. As we mentioned in the brief history of 40K, the Emperor of Mankind leads the Imperium as much as an all but dead husk of the most powerful psychic being mankind ever produced stuck in a life sustaining throne can anyway. The Emperor is such a powerful psyker or psychic being that if he were to die, the light of the Astronomicon would go out, and faster than light or warp travel becomes essentially impossible, and the galaxy-spanning Imperium of Mankind would fall into darkness as all its worlds would be cut off from each other. Ugh. <laughs> Much like Darth Vader's like suit keeps him alive, right? And people are still worshipping him? Who's tested this theory, though? Has anybody tried it? <laughs> It's a bunch of space warriors. <laughs> uh, they would be like the boys in blue. They're the, the bootlicking, strategic. Ultramarines, that's not these guys. Police, space police. That is, oh I thought those, is there a difference between space marine and ultramarine? Ah, uh, space marines, the angels of death. Genetically enhanced super soldiers that guard humanity from all the various threats. They sport incredible armor and powerful weapons, and a single space marine is more equivalent to a modern tank than a regular human soldier. In fact, they're barely human at all anymore. The space marines are divided into roughly a thousand chapters of about a thousand space marines each. The ultramarines, space romans, are one of these chapters and are one of the most well known, but others include the space wolves, space vikings, the dark angels, space knights, blood angels, space vampires, and many, many, many others. Okay. They can eat knowledge, can't they? Space Marines are so genetically modified they are barely recognizable as human. They've got two hearts. They have something called a black carapace that's implanted into their torso so it can mesh with their powered armor better. They even have the ability to gain insight into their opponents by consuming a bit of them, literally eating the flesh of their enemies to know what they're thinking. Some of them can still even spit acid. I mean, 10,000 years ago, they were at their peak of their power, so in the year 40,000, where we are, a lot of their enhancements are starting to fail, but still, they're kind of amped up to 11. Chaos is, uh, I guess, the universal villain. It can, like, infect you, I guess it's their version of, like, hell. Chaos, or the Ruinous Powers, is a term used to describe various factions of traitors and demons who seek to destroy the Imperium of Man and the order it represents. Really, they seek to end everyone, but mankind's latent psychic nature really gets them demons salivating. The Realm of Chaos is called the Warp and is effectively emotion and psychic potential made manifest. The Gods of Chaos use their demon followers to tempt humanity with promises of power. Generally, demons align with one of the four gods. Korn is the god of war, and he cares not from where the blood flows. Zinch is the god of change and magic. The changer of the ways is always tricksy and false. Nurgle is the god of pestilence and decay. All things come to Father Nurgle. And Slanesh is the god of much, much excess. Like all the excess. They're kind of weird. The forces of chaos are generally anathema to all living things, and they seek to corrupt it all. 
Then you have traitor space marines, which also are technically chaos. These are space marines that betrayed the Emperor in a galaxy-spanning civil war 10,000 years ago known as the Horus Heresy. They lost that fight, fled into the warp where they still live and plot mankind's destruction. Some of them have gone mad, some just are mad, and some have grown extra tentacles. They all want to see the Imperium subjugated and the Corpse Emperors they call him destroyed forever. Orcs. Dacca. Funny. Cockney accents. Orcs. In. Space! Orcs are a race of warlike green-skinned aliens who love nothing more than a good fight. They are constantly fighting amongst themselves to prove dominance and absolutely love to fight really any other species. A good crumpet is what they call it, as long as they give a good fight back. They believe in Gork, or possibly Bork, as their supreme deity, depending on what day it is, or which orc you ask. There's much to suggest they're an ancient genetically engineered race, and they are incredibly difficult to eradicate, as they grow from spores just thrown about like a spreading fungus. They, so, what, what is it about them? I, I learned something about them uh, as they operate. They get stronger the more that, like, what is it? They are a psychically gifted race without actually knowing it. But that not knowing makes their impossibly crude slapdash technology work. It's simply that they believe it will. More DACA is a thing, oh? And they get stronger and bigger the more they fight, literally. Orcs don't succumb to the law of gravity because they never studied the law. That's how powerful they can be. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, the Borgs. Robot zombie type, like something like, it's like a robot and a zombie had a baby or something like a... The Necron tier are one of the oldest races in the universe. Once they were flesh, now they are a race of robotic beings, little more than full on murder robots. Their hatred of the race known as the Old Ones drove them and their technological discoveries to find the Star Gods or the Satan. What started as a promise of immortality was actually a trick by the Satan that effectively purged the individuality of the entire Necron tier race. Et voila, we have Necrons. The average Necron is little more than a mindless robot while a few retain a measure of intelligence and autonomy. After nearly conquering the galaxy, they all entered an extensive hibernation but are now emerging ready to conquer the galaxy once more. The uh, cannon fodder of the Emperor, different planets um, have different ways of recruitment and they die by the thousands. The Astra Militarum, better known as the Imperial Guard, are the bog regular soldiers of the Imperium. Trillions of guardsmen and billions of tanks are stationed in war zones or on garrison duty around the galaxy. Almost exclusively unaugmented humans, they are the closest analog in Warhammer 40,000 to a modern day soldier. Every planet in the Imperium is required to set a tithe of soldiers, as well as everything else, and often it'll be the job of the guard to hold the ground in massive battles of attrition until the more elite forces of the Space Marines come in and steal all the glory. Adeptus Mechanicus, uh, is that the, that's like the machine world, right? That's, that's like the, um, God, like the service skulls and all that, that's Adeptus Mechanicus, right? The Adeptus Mechanicus are a powerful faction of the Imperium that are responsible for producing pretty much all of the technology that powers the Imperial war effort. From guns to tanks, the massive god machines of the Adeptus Titanicus, they make them all. They even make toasters. Tech priests who worship the Emperor as their machine god or Omnissiah are always looking for new ways to improve their technology, be it steal it from aliens or even other humans. They prize knowledge above all things, and without a thought, they will shed oceans of blood in their endless crusade for acquisition. Such is the will of the Omnissiah, and his priests will stop at nothing to see that will be done. One Imperial decree is that thinking machines, artificial intelligence, are strictly verboten. Big war back in the day versus those thinking machines, the men of iron. So to get around that loss, criminals and other humans are effectively lobotomized and used as servitors or cogitators. It's really creepy. There's several other military factions that make up the Imperial War Machine as well. There's the Sisters of Battle, the militant arm of the Church of the Emperor. Basically, they will set you on fire if you don't believe the Emperor is a god. Always fun. Great at parties. The Imperial Knights. Those are big, stompy robots. Whee! The Adeptus Titanicus, even bigger, stompier robots. The God Machines, more we. There are the Grey Knights, a super secret group of even more elite space marines. They are tasked with tracking down chaos incursions and covering it up, <coughs> murdering all proof of existence of demons while dealing with them. There's also the Adeptus Custodes, 
The Custodes, the Custodes, the janitors of the Imperium. They're even more elite super soldiers, and they're personal guards of the Emperor himself. Lately, though, they've been convinced it might be better to guard the Emperor by going out and fighting the enemies themselves, rather than waiting for it to come to them, but they are still the Emperor's Praetorians. There are countless other bureaucratic arms of the Imperium, and multiple sub-factions of each of them. It is a massive, galaxy-wide empire after all, and the crushing weight of bureaucracy is arguably their biggest threat. Tau. Everyone loves the Tau. I saw a lot of comments. Something about fish? <laughs> they seem like the sweet boys of the of the universe. That's what I know so far. Ah, the Tau. Often referred to as fish people, thanks to the naming convention of the ships being all aquatically themed. Manta, Tiger Shark, Barracuda, Tetra, you see how it is. And of course, the internet being the internet. Tau do take a lot of inspiration aesthetically from anime in that they have a lot of mecha-style battle suits. Tau are primarily a race of highly advanced blue-skinned aliens, however, they do have other races as part of their collective greater good. They believe in working together and giving all in the service of that greater good, which is a moral creed that guides their activities that is rigidly enforced by re-education camps should you not align with the ruling cast material's vision of said greater good. A young race by galactic standards, 10,000 years ago they were a primitive backwater that mankind ignored as they weren't even a millionth of a threat. They incorporate countless other races within the Empire such as the Crute and the Vespid, and even humans, all chained to the greater good. They are naive and they are eager, not yet having fully encountered the horrors of the galaxy, and importantly, do not have any psychic potential yet. They're just hungry. Tyranids gotta eat, baby. Tyranids are uh, like your xenomorphs. They have no other objectives. They have no ulterior motives. Is it like a hive mind type? Alien. Hunt, destroy, eat, and leave. The Tyranids, the Great Devourer, somewhat new to this galaxy as they showed up and appeared to have a simple goal. Devour everything they can and turn it into biomass to propagate more of its species. They are led by a hive mind that sends forth and creates ravenous swarms of terrible creatures from the biomass of whatever it digests. It is rumored that only a fraction of the true size of the Tyranid Swarm has even entered our galaxy, and that they may be running from something from their own galaxy. Nobody knows, though, as they're more bitey-bitey than they are talky-talky. Alongside the Tyranids, the Gene Sealer cults have emerged, which are advanced parties of Tyranid organisms called Gene Sealers that hide among cities and caves around the galaxy. They use their psychic influence to help infest unaware citizens and slowly amass a following, infiltrating all levels of leadership until the Tyranid Swarm closes and is ready to attack. Then the Gene Stealer cultists emerge, throwing the entire planet into chaos and making it easier for the swarm to devour the planet. One thing the hive mind does, though, is once a planet is about to be eaten, they pull back their psychic influence and let their followers see with clear eyes all the horror they have wrought. Nice. Eldar, they're the uh, OG, like from back in the day, their their version of elves, I guess, or something. The Eldari, also known as the Azriani, are a super ancient race of beings who once effectively ruled everything, having stopped the Necrons from enslaving everybody. They are a dying race, few in number, and are now scattered across the galaxy. They have unmatched psychic abilities, and in truth, their emotional capacity is on a scale unimaginable to humans, and they have a deep connection to the warp, which is a dimension of pure energy that is a reflection of, you guessed it, emotions and psychic power. Once the Necrons were contained, the Eldar race kind of slipped into a bit of ennui and searched for ways to stimulate themselves, and as the most powerful psychic race, their descent to excess did kind of bring into existence the Chaos God being Slanesh, she who thirsts, the Prince of Excess, who desires everything everywhere all at once, but mostly wants to devour more Eldar souls as they're super tasty, and his birth tore open what's called the Eye of Terror, a rip in the fabric between warp and real space Basically a giant explosion that destroyed most of the Eldar homeworlds in the process. Now most of the survivors float around on giant craft world spaceships, yearning for the days of yore and meddling in the affairs of every other race in order to protect their failing future and to try to safeguard mortals, whatever that means. They also wear soul stones that capture their psychic essence should they die, otherwise Slanesh will eat them. There were survivors of the fall as it's called. They are the Drukhari or Dark Eldar. The Eldar had created the Webway and Webway Gates. Think of them as tunnels between real space and the warp that allowed almost instantaneous transition between places without the necessity of bulky ships. They'd also created pocket realms on those webways, even entire cities, and many Eldar that were in the web were unaffected by the massive Slanesh soul suck. 
Realizing it was a psychic potential Slaanesh wanted, they completely cut themselves off from their psychic cells, but this left a hole that affected their effective mortality. So instead of their own psychic potential to sustain them, they basically use everyone else's. They're like emotional vampires. They suck the life out of everyone else through raids for slaves for their arena games or torture covens. Basically all the dark corners of hedonism and vice that you should never Google. Harlequins are Eldar that seek to keep Eldar history and mythos alive and to do some serious murder clowning. The troop players reenact the fall of the Eldari, the war in heaven, and key moments in their mythology, plus the aforementioned murder clowning. The Leagues of Otan are known, but actually a fairly new race in the scene, being rather circumspect and keeping to themselves for the last 10,000 odd years. Working, mining, and trading in the stellar nursery that is the galactic core, the recent rent in the galaxy has forced them to interact with outsiders, a squat and powerful folk, see what I did there, they are vat born and grown, being genetically engineered to provide as stable a genome as possible. They supplement their ranks with ironkin assistants, thinking machine automata that are vital and accepted part of their culture. The actual Votan themselves are massive thinking engines, venerated as leaders and ancestors specific to each clan, but they are slowing down in their old age, taking decades or centuries to sometimes answer a simple question. Seriously, someone needs to defrag their hard disks, because they're starting to system error like crazy. How did I do with the lore? You did great! Well done! If you're looking to find out more about the lore of 40k and take your first steps into this grim dark universe, not only are there great lore channels on YouTube such as Luton or Oculus Imperialis, one of the best places is the books of the Black Library. Black Library is the official source of all the lore of 40k, and novels and short stories span from the Horse Heresy to current 41st millennium. The sponsor of this first step series is Wayland Games, and they have a great selection of Black Library books to get you started in 40k. They're offering 5% off of all their Black Library content. They also have a fantastic selection of games, miniatures, and much, much more. Make sure to check out Wayland Games in the link in the description below and tell them Play On sent you. All right, well, I hope you guys are excited as I am. I'm so looking forward to learning 40K with you guys and playing this game.